Well, hello, everybody. Peace be with you. Well, uh, as you can obviously tell, this is a, a bit different. Uh, this is the a bit of a kind of a shortened online worship uh, experience and service for November uh, 28th, 2021, which is the first Sunday in Advent. And so by this time, you will know that um, for, the, for the first time in 13 years, both Jen and I were sick. I woke up sick on Sunday morning. And given all that's going on in COVID and out of an abundance of caution, um, I decided to cancel the service. Uh, hopefully everyone who was planning on coming was most people were able to be notified ahead of time. And, and thank you, Julie, for sending out some uh, some notices online. Really appreciate that. But we just felt it was uh, the right thing to do. We want to be cautious as we have been. However, I still wanted to be able to provide uh, some sort of kind of shortened online worship experience. Maybe some people went back and looked at an old service. Maybe uh, some of you uh, found some other worship service. Maybe some of you just had worship time yourself in prayer and in the scriptures and, and maybe even some singing. So hopefully did, but if not, I wanted to provide a bit of a short experience if some people were looking for some direction or help uh, to have something to do together. So I'm just going to do some announcements and we're going to get right into it. And so, uh, you know, Jen usually is the birthday person. She knows, I don't know what source of information she gets all this stuff from, but uh, anyway, I think it's Jen Josephic's birthday today. So Jen, uh, happy birthday. I think it's your brother Steve's uh, birthday as well. So happy birthday. Hope you're feeling great. Hope there's uh, something special planned. And also Amber Uri, it's your birthday today too. And again, thank you and hope for, for singing Faith outside at the uh, outdoor worship service last week. So thank you so much. Um, perhaps also it is obvious, but uh, this afternoon's outdoor worship service is canceled. And that was actually to be the last one. And that was a trial project that we have from September 19th, I believe it was, to the end of November. Uh, again, just kind of, you know, trying to increase and be creative about the ways we can have fellowship and worship and learn together. So it wasn't just the service, it was also Sunday school. And uh, I just think it was, a, it was a definitely well worth the time, a great success. Um, but actually, you know, Jen and I are sick today, so it, it wouldn't have worked out anyway, but uh, we were going to uh, not do that as we, as we notified people, uh, because it's, I'm looking out the window, it's, below zero and uh it's snowing heavily right now and 70 percent chance this morning it's like really accumulating so it didn't make sense to do it especially with the equipment and everything and i've got this app on my phone and basically if you type in what you plan on doing based on what the weather is it'll tell you what you will look like in that weather and i did that and here's what i look like <laughs> Okay, you're right. I don't actually have an app that says that. I just thought that looked funny. But uh, anyway, I just want to thank everybody, not only for the services, but for the um, who helped out with the Sunday school. I think it was good. We continue to try to be creative and, and have energy around different things that will help us see through this time with fellowship and worship. So stay tuned for uh, other things that will be uh, upcoming. Uh, in terms of other announcements, just want to let you know, and those of you who, who would have come this morning would have found this out, but just this past week on Thursday, um, the local health unit announced new procedures uh, and policies with respect to COVID-19. And so they came into effect immediately. So we just appreciate your patience and understanding as we do our best to comply with ever evolving changes. Um, special thanks go out to our opening up committee, Steve Sainsbury, Tom Walsh, Colin Leonard, who have been working behind the scenes, trying to understand everything, trying to put things in place. What can we do? What can't we do? Um, and so thank you for them. But you'll notice some additional screenings, some additional things that we have to do, um, not only on Sundays, but anytime someone comes to the building. So more information about that. Uh, also, the opening up committee will have some recommendations as a result of the recent congregational survey. And so that's coming out in the near uh, future. I also want to let you know that, uh, you know, I, I didn't preach today, and um, if I had uh, have done that, it would have been on a, a section of text in Hebrews 13. I will do that review about the whole Radiant series shortly. But for those looking to spend some time going a bit deeper with some biblical content today, uh, the Pulse podcast episode that was pre-recorded uh, has come out uh, on Hebrews 13, a line-by-line -line explanation. So you'll be able to find it on the Westminster website uh, under blogs, but also you'll be able to find it at matthewrattan.com. And I just, in about 25 minutes or 30 minutes, take us through line by line that, um, that important final section of text. As a reminder, our toy drive is coming up. Um, and uh, this is through the Simcoe Muskoka Family Connections. And uh, we wanted specifically to focus on a group that is quite often neglected. And so that is the zero to two 
age category and also the 15 to 21 age category. And so those groups quite often get missed. And so as a part of our toy drive, drop off begins next Sunday, will occur throughout the week of the um, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, you know, in the mornings um, at the church office. And um, we'll continue on the Sunday of the 12th in the morning as well. So hopefully you can contribute to that. God has been so generous to us. And hopefully this is a way that we can help others at this time of year. And then finally, for announcements, uh, next week we will celebrate the Sacrament of Communion. That's December 5th. And so... Um, in person. Uh, all, and by the way, the service will definitely be happening. There's a couple of us leading the service together. So even if one of us goes down, the whole thing is going to happen. And um, celebrating the Sacrament of Communion. So if you'll be at home for that, and I realize that most people still are heavier elements, and we will do that earlier on in uh, the service, have your bread and your juice or wine. Also, we will invite a special offering. And if you're in a position to be able to contribute to something called our Deacon's Fund, that would be great. And this is something we do every time we celebrate the Sacrament of Communion. And it's a fund that helps people who are struggling financially, both inside and outside of the church. So if that's something you're able to contribute to, you can think about that as well. So having said those announcements, uh, we're going to get into this short, brief time of worship. And what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to have an opening, uh, an opening song, and the opening song is called What a Beautiful Name It Is. And Janet actually uh, got this video to teach this to the congregation today. Some of you will have heard it on Life 100.3. It's a great song. So we're going to sing that. I'm going to pray. I'll lead us through a scripture reading and some kind of discussion questions around the theme of hope, because that's something we talk about on the first Sunday in Advent. Uh, then we'll have a closing song, and that will be it. So let us take a moment to steady our hearts as we prepare to worship the living God together. Let's sing What a Beautiful Name It Is. And if you're able, let's stand up together. Your hidden glory 
Such a beautiful song. Let us pray to God together. God of hope, we are amazed by you, and your name is beautiful. In a world with so much darkness, you conquer with the light of Christ. When there is so much change, you remain firm and secure. When others break their promises, your promises remain unbroken. When others abandon us, you never do. In a world of limits, you are limitless. You have unfathomable wisdom, able to do anything and everything. Despite our mistakes, you welcome us, you love us, you give us purpose, and you call us friends. Because you have shown us your loving heart, we can be confident and even bold when we approach you and speak with you. And this is why we ask for your forgiveness. For the times we have known the right thing to do and done something else. For the times we have used angry, accusatory words because we really wanted to get back at someone. For the times we have been condescending towards others and have refused to look in the mirror at our own shortcomings. For the times we said we have believed in you but have only been going through the motions. For the times we believe the lie that faith shouldn't transform every part of our lives. For the times we have invested more in despair than your hope, please forgive us. Keep us safe from the evils in our world so that its deceptions never allure us and so that its ugliness never intimidates us. Abolish every rebel sin, every selfish excuse. Occupy the throne of our hearts. Take full possession, Lord, and reign supreme. 
Manifest your holy and hope-filled power in us and in your world. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, our coming King, and together with the words that he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, trust that in Christ you are forgiven and you are made new. Thanks be to the God who loves us that much that he adopts us as his own children, embraces us, and works in and through us by his Spirit. So our scripture reading is going to be from the Gospel according to Luke, and this is a well-known passage, especially during the time of Advent, and it has to do with Mary, hence you can uh, see Mary uh, in the picture behind me. But uh, it's about hope, and how this is going to work is I'm going to share the passage with you, and then whether you're by yourself or maybe you're with you're in your household or some other people, I encourage you to just um, think about two questions. So I'm going to read it and then give you two questions to think about to serve as a kind of conversation point uh, with others based on the theme of, of hope. And so after I read it and give you the questions, you can pause it, and then we'll sing the last song together, or you can sing the last song and then... Um, and then come back and have that discussion time together. Uh, but it's about hope. It's Luke 1, verses 26 to 56. And it's on the theme theme of hope. But what is, what is hope? Now, uh, I was having this conversation earlier this week with uh, Benjamin, uh, my son Benjamin. And we were talking about, you know, Advent. And, and one of the themes that comes up is hope and having hope. So what are the, some of the things we hope for or look forward to? Uh, during Advent and Christmas. And, you know, we talked about a bunch of things. You know, one thing that comes to mind is opening presents, or maybe it's a meal, maybe it's a gathering with friends. Uh, we talked about um, maybe there's there's some other thing that we can look forward to that's special. Maybe it's um, drive through Bethlehem. Maybe it's uh, a special Christmas Eve service. Uh, maybe it's, you know, giving a present to someone else, right? And so we talked about these things. Maybe it's yeah, like uh, con contributing to a, fo a food drive, or maybe you're going to do some sort of special tradition. Like, what are the things we hope for? And and as he and I were talking about it, we're trying to think of a definition for hope. And something that we came up for is that hope is knowing that better is coming. Hope is knowing that better is coming, right? And part of the reason this motivates us and, and sustains us as God's people is because, as we sometimes say, when you have something good to look forward to, it softens the blow of what you're currently going through. Um, so hope is knowing that better is coming. And so I'm going to read this story from Luke chapter 1. And this is about hope. It's about expectation. Mary is pregnant, uh, looking forward to the birth of Jesus. And we think through her words and the story and, and, and some of the reasons why we might also have hope. Okay, so this is Luke chapter uh, 1. Uh, and I'm going to begin at verse 26. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. 
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So keeping in mind that, that, that sense of hope, that hope is, uh, hope is knowing that better is coming. Here are the two questions that I encourage you just to ponder in light of that story um, or, or to have, um, have a conversation with some people in your household. First question, how does God give us hope? Quite simple, how does God give us hope? Reflect on that together. Second, how can we show that we have hope during Advent? How can we show as God's people that we have hope during Advent. So pause this now, have that discussion, or you can sing our last song and have it together. And our song is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, one of the great songs of Advent. to thy glorious throne. 
Peace be with you. May our God of explosive love shower you and soak you with his grace. May the Messiah of God, Jesus Christ, discover his hands in your hands. And may the Holy Spirit of God find a home in each and every one of your hearts for the healing of the world. And shalom.